I feel like I want to just reintroduce this and say that we are attempting to do a very conscientious job on this $500 in stock rebuild. I did make the investment in some run of the mill tools just so that we could do some proper measurements. Obviously, if I came across a measurement that was a deal breaker, we might have to drop back 10 and punt, as they say. So far, that has not been the case. I did buy a relatively inexpensive micrometer set. I did buy a relatively, probably more inexpensive bore gauge. That will probably be upgraded long before these micrometers will be. But these tools are allowing us to test the dimension of the cylinders in the block and mic them out. We can also use these micrometers to test the outside dimension of the crank journals, both the main and the rods. And we're just gonna record these numbers and we're gonna see how far we are away from tolerances. All seriousness, we're gonna do our absolute best to make this thing run well. I know the implication is $500 and all the parts we have in stock and we're just going to zip tie it together. Well, we are going to use what we have in stock. And we really don't want to spend any more money than we've already spent on it. But that said, we're going to try and do the right thing and build it right. Okay, that's kind of the premise of this little video here. Hopefully, what you see is John and I playing around with some measurements. And, you know, we're learning some of the nuances of these gauges. And we're not kidding around. So what I want to do is measure according to, we're not going to use the Mondello stuff. We're going to use the actual factory assembly manual pages. I don't like that board gauge. Well, we don't have any other options, being that that's our board gauge. <laughs> I'm using it. I paid a lot of money for this. All we're really going to do is zero out that's right. each cylinder. So then right here, yeah. and this little Go these, these, see these high quality wheels on this thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't really spin <laughs> at all. If I loosen up the Phillips screws, uh, aka wheel bearings. Well, you don't, we can't have any play in those wheels because if there's any movement there, then that's, you know. All right, well, they're going back to tight. We're just going to call them perfectly circular scratchers. So this is the cylinder that we know had that busted piston skirt. And right where we know it doesn't, like it goes. And they were starting to go backwards. Yeah, exactly. So that's our zero. That's pretty good, huh? I'd say that's it. Okay, so we're going to lock the gauge. Middle, yeah, it's middle, the, middle of the middle bore, of right? So now what we're going to do to do that. Middle of six. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to take, because it's 4.057 is the stock bore. I remember it's tattooed on my left yeah. shoulder blade. So, <laughs> so what I would was doing here is I was taking it I can go back into this into the shot for some eye candy yeah let's see here well it's good if you're at the <laughs> <laughs> I meant oh yeah no we're all the way down we can see all the way no we're good no, we got the whole wiggle around is it helping it's moving a little bit it's getting bigger oh right there holy mackerel that's it that's like zero so we're in we're in cylinder Six. size oh 135 right Oh, oh well, no, 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 yeah, no, you're right, six. Four, six. So we're at 4.0. Five, see this, right? Because we're, we're two ticks past the zero. So we know that the smallest measurement that this micrometer can ever give us is four inches. That's right. It can never give us smaller than that. So we know we're zero, two, five, plus another two, five is 50, mm -hmm. right? So we know we're point zero. Five plus five, yep. six, seven, eight. See how the eight yeah, yeah, is yeah. right on there? So it's point zero five eight on a stock bore, which is which four is point oh five seven. seven. So, all right. So pick, pick a pick a random. Yeah, yeah let's uh, pick a rando, a random cylinder. I mean, history is cylinder five. That was never mind. My rocker really, really ate that. That thing was not happy. Yeah, I, was, no. I had to call you up and say, Steve, 
Car's not happy. Yeah, well, she's stabbing like Fred Astaire. Sometimes those rockers, like this, you know, like like uh, like Godfather says, sometimes they like to lay over. <laughs> they sure do. And look, like we said before, and I'll say it again as I'm staring into the camera, it's going together with what we have. We just want to know how bad it really is. That's right. But it's, I mean, these pistons are going in this block, and mix. The rings I have, and it's all what I buy is all standard stuff. And we're already over budget, so there's no room for any new parts. No, no. Matter of fact, we're gonna sell something. Yeah. Well, all these tools will be sold afterwards to get us back to much. <laughs> no, I think we're gonna we're gonna figure out on the dry erase. We're gonna sit down with some receipts and, but you know, oil and a filter that could throw us over. Well, listen, we were shooting for five hundred dollars. Ready? Yep. Here, keep going. You drive. I'm gonna hold this. Oh, yeah. I like how we did that. Yeah, I liked it too. Man, this motor is not in bad shape, man. It should run just the way it is. All right, in all seriousness, we're going to continue on some measurements here, and you have a zeroed out. I have a zeroed out, and it's exactly what the number three was that we just did. So that's, but I forget which one we did if it was up and down. So well, it's just my. Here's the deal you know, we did seven measurements. 4.057 is the factory bore size of a small block Oldsmobile. The average we have right now is 4.057, no joke, 4.42. I'm not making that up. That is the actual average of all our measurements, front to back, top to bottom. Uh, this is not fun. No, it's very, very challenging. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you make me very thirsty. <laughs> you have 585. I had 571. All right, well, let's, I mean, big discrepancy, let's just, yeah, I'm just human. Yeah, hey, listen, you know, and again, I was doing it totally, you know, solo. So your 585 has now just become, you think you're measuring about the same place? Yep. Well, yeah. We so, so your 585 and your 583 gut check, my 571, but I could have been playing around, you know, one inch down. You know, it, it's a C cylinder. So I figured C's are going to be at or greater than stock four. That's right. So that 4.057, and you're coming up with five eighths. Yeah, which is closer in line to at least. I was still over at five seven one, so it still gets a C piston. Yes, yes, yes. Now the real question is, I'm missing six. Six is a piston what? Uh, six. Six. Six should be a B. Between. Is an at or less than, according to all the others, and a C is at or greater than. I can't get the flipping ring off of this. B. I know. Letter six is going to get a number C for real. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> so what John and I have been working on is measuring the cylinders, right? And our average of all our cylinders, I know this is not ultra scientific, but it, man, it's better than what most people would do. The average of the measurements that we've been taking, quite literally, this is the number that it is, 4.057442. How funny is that, right? Now look, John and I got a laugh. We laugh out loud, don't we, John? So I was saying we got to laugh because, you know, John's dad started a tree company. My father, Joe and my father, was a union commercial roofer. I say this because our dads had trucks that they needed. And they did repairs like this, not for fun. They did repairs like this Friday night. Oh, Wednesday night. When, the, yeah. The like, chipper goes down or the truck drops the transmission. Guess what? Guess what? I'm holding the flashlight for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, we buy these tools and we're taking these measurements because we want to try to do the wrong thing right. How about that? <laughs> we want to do the wrong thing right. We're not taking this to Mike. We're really not kidding around. We're saying that our dads kind of taught us that stuff can be fixed. But they didn't do it with these tools. They did it because they had to. You know, I used to plow snow for 20 years. 
John still has a snowplow on his truck for his, uh, his family development. When you're in the middle of a snowstorm and your plow breaks, you just get to rigging because you have to make it through the storm. And oftentimes your rigging yields a repair that will last season after season. We used to be in the commercial lawn mowing game. Guess what? When your mowers break, your trailers break, you just get to getting and you get that equipment back in service. For years when we were kids, our dad had a 68 C10, short bed, step side, cool little truck. Blue reverse in that thing in the driveway in the snow. A buddy drops over another transmission. They literally put plywood under the truck in the snow. Swap the transmission. Didn't swap the clutch. That old transmission sat on our basement steps because my father said, we can rebuild that. We're going to hang on to that. And my father was very, very neat. <laughs> and he wouldn't have had that transmission laying around unless he really thought he was going to rebuild it. The point is that used transmission that they just scabbed in that truck stayed in that truck until he actually was in an accident and totaled the thing out. Some of what we're doing is above and beyond what we know stuff can run on. And that's only because we want to push our envelope. We want to get a little bit better at some of this more technical assembly stuff than just that, you know, shade tree mechanic level stuff. Cutting cars apart, cutting rust apart, putting it back together, making them get to car shows and drag races, we can do that. We really want to see if we have what it takes to put an engine that hasn't run in 20 plus years together with a very, very small budget and just do it the right way. We are making sure we're having match fit pistons. We are making sure our crank journals are not wiped out and they're not. I have a bunch of measurements here that we've been working on to prove that. One thing we cannot get over is that I need a B piston for this. C piston's not going to work. The skirts are not going in. We have a B piston. It's beautiful. It has uh, 180 degrees of piston ring stuck in it. I mean stuck. We have to really work on that. So. Because I don't want to warp it either, right? So this, this is the piston we need. Mm -hmm. This is no BS. Such a gorgeous low compression two yeah. barrel L65 piston. Nice it. round groove. Really, really no. Look at all the rings are out of this piston. Except for the top ring, literally 50% of it. Look at that. 50% of that ring. Really trying to adhere to the what we have in stock. Every one of these pistons either has no more rings on them or all the rings are there and they're loose and free. Bit of a challenge we're facing right now. Not going to lie because not only do we have to get the ring off of that piston, but we have to get a wrist pin and rod onto that piston yes. without cracking. This piston here, she's not going to fit. This one is just not, <laughs> it just doesn't. I, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I'll get it in there. Oh, it'll go in. I'll get it in there, but then we're talking about something's breaking—a rod or the piston. We're not losing hope because we're just not those guys. We're not going to lose hope. No. We're going to figure something out. We're going to get that piston off of there, and then we'll crack it, putting a rod on it. So, good news. I know we we spared you viewers from watching a very unorthodox procedure of putting a piston in a bench vise and. <laughs> Guys. basically creating a relative piston gripper piston ring gripper out of one of my nonsensical tools where it went and ultimately hammering out the piston ring and this in several pieces this my friends is how the piston ring came out and she did not want to give up the goat but the good news is we have the proper letter piston that will now go in the proper cylinder, cylinder number six. Sweetness, okay? Boom. So we have a piston that goes in there. So the only thing we have to do now is be very, very careful and press our wrist pin and connecting rod and piston all in one piece. Then my friends, we actually do have an eight cylinder engine that has eight slugs. So what we got accomplished here tonight, Joe's going to have to work with some real magic on this video, is <laughs> yeah. 
we mic'd out some cylinders. We're basically saying, yeah, we're a little overbore on some. We might be a little under. Now, this is really the thrust sides of the cylinder, right? The maximum and minimum thrust because the crank is spinning this way. So we know that if a cylinder is going to get egged normally, it will get stretched out top to bottom, not left to right. What we have is some cylinders that are a little out of round. Okay. We're not veering off our course. We've mic'd out the crank. We're not ready to put it in. We're trying to keep you guys posted on what's happening in short little increments. We're getting ready to do a final clean on this. Crank you saw get polished last week. So once this thing is cleaned, we'll show you our new cam bearing tool over there. We did knock out all the old cam bearings and I have them in stock. How they came out, they're nasty. So we are going to clean this motor up. I think maybe this weekend, Joe's coming up. And then I think John, Joe, and I will show, I think the most efficient way to do it, now that I'm talking it out loud with everybody, measure as we go. We'll measure our main bore clearances, our crankshaft mains, which I have done that and recorded some of that. I think that's the best way to go rather than do all the measurements in a video. That's kind of lame. We'll just... Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it, like, like we've said many times, this is just knowing how bad or good it is and either way it's going back together that's a very true fact so no one's going to be able to tell us you know yeah, those I cylinders mean, overboard no we know they're overboard and we'll tell you by how much they're overboard so what's the worst case scenario is we'll have a little bit of piston to wall clearance uh no, I, additional option <laughs> we'll have a little bit extra ring gap clearance motors run good loose Motors run good loose, man. Look it up. Look at Joe Mondello's catalog, man. They build them tight in factory, but if you want to go screaming. We always used to say in high school, remember this? Everything runs great before they blow up. Oh, that's <laughs> you, right. You know you need a ride home, and on your way to school, that thing is wailing. <laughs> so, all right. That's it for this week's thing. I think when Joe gets here, we're going to spend a little bit more time on the front end of Mr. Jones. Yeah. Joe's got, uh, John's got some stuff. That Joe has been working on, on the, for the on the Corvette. So we got a lot of stuff going on. And uh, if you guys are watching and you're digging it, do it. Click the like. We're learning very slowly how much that is important to us. And you know what else helps? If you like what you're watching, send it to your son, your brother, your neighbor. Maybe they'll like it. Maybe they won't. All right. See you over the weekend.